Hey y'all, it's Anime Gaming, and today I'm going to be live reacting to Mao Dao Sushi Episode 5. And just a heads up everyone, I'm going to start from the 2 minute and 10 second mark because it's pretty much just the opening and then that cute little advertising with the bunnies. And yeah, so without further ado, I'm going to start the live reaction from that point in 1, 0, go! Yeah, because I've already uh, seen the opening once, and to make the live reactions go a bit quicker, I just skip what I've already reacted to before. It's formed by Resident Evil Ninja from Warner Comics. Hmm. I'm dealing with sick materials and exp That sounds like a pain, though, to do. Mm hmm. <clears throat> At the same time, it does increase the difficulty level a bit because they've got to be a bit intuitive in order to. <laughs> ah, we. Our boy, our man tried to be slick, but he wasn't slick enough. I like how that's a little subtle answer of no. With like the blade being pulled out. That's actually a nice effect how the rain droplets are actually sticking on the sword. And you see it dripping from the sword itself too. Oh, that's actually pretty rare to see rain droplets line on a character's um, clothing. And you can see like the water effect drip. You can even see the wetness sticking on his hair. It's actually impressive. A lot of um, cartoons and animes I've seen don't even go that far with the quality, with the attention to detail. <laughs> this dude. I am How quick is Lansan? What? Uh-huh. Didn't he say something similar to that a few episodes ago? <laughs> Come on, we! The same excuse ain't gonna work all the time. <laughs> I think regardless, he would help Land's end, though. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh! You actually got a hit! Okay! <laughs> what? All this just to steal some. Some nifty little trinkets. <laughs> did, did I just hear a little subtle laugh? Or chuckle? If only they would have seen Wee in the previous episode while he was in the body of water, that was probably like the only time he wasn't smiling. Probably one of the few instances. But I could see their understanding where they'd be like, even if it's falling, he'd still be smiling. You know, I love a man, but he kind of does deserve it! Okay, I don't think that much. Oh, Lensan's actually being hit too? But in a way, it gives us extreme amounts of characterization showing off that if he feels he himself is doing something unethical, 
he'll still want to be punished. He'll still want himself to be punished for the ramifications of it. That's actually was an amazing scene right there. It shows you his honorable nature. And, and you know what I like about that? It gives us characterization by showing us a pretty cool action sequences, mixing it in with comedy so that when it actually gets into the punish, punishment sequence, it's actually intended drama. And it's elevated due to the punishment coming after a relatively seemingly harmonious comedic sequence. To be able to utilize all these elements is pretty masterful. Gotta give my props to the to the writers in charge of this. Mm. I mean, it's understandable. No one's gonna want to expose themselves. Oh. And a cool sequence here too. Reason being that with the Wang Clan, they keep on mentioning multiple times, keeping you on, on your toes so that if we do see them again, it's gonna be a big deal. And it shows you how the other clans feel about them too. And again, what makes this conversation sequence really good is the breathtaking backgrounds. <laughs> That's on him. <clears throat> oh man, he just loves to find ways of getting. I like it though. He even snitch out. <laughs> Wait, that was hella hella cool. Yo, now that is some beautiful background work because you can even three to five. But I guess you know what to say. A punishment does isn't really a punishment if you don't feel it. So they were eating him softer then. Hmm. The action tells you a lot about Lan Zan then. I wonder if he told him to punish himself much more harshly than Wei. That actually shows you the consideration he gives to other people. Quite a beautiful sequence there. And I'm not saying it's beautiful because, well, they're both nude. I mean, hell, they're actually beautifully drawn. I mean, it's a beautiful sequence because we see some bonding. They're getting closer to each other to these in, through these interactions. Oh. And that is some nice detail, too. This is... In this sequence, normally, one would say this is fan service, but I don't think it's fan service. I think it's necessary to the plot because you see the severity of the hits just going by the bruises on the back. Showing off visuals to give us storytelling that shows things, not just tell us things. Can't blame the man for trying, though. You know what they say. Shoot your shot. <laughs> Yo! You don't just 
do that to another person's clothing. He does. I'm I'm in agreement with Way there, but <laughs> oh, ah, oh, shame their fun time is being disturbed by zombies. Damn it! Those flowers, beautiful even in the dark. Mm. And I like that little camera trick. First, it showed you the flowers were focused on, but the background was blurred. And then afterwards, the background is in clear detail, but then the flowers are blurred. Nice perception, um, perception shots there. I wonder, are these zombies going to be stronger than the ones we saw in the first episode, or weaker? That's what I'm wondering. Guess they're on the weaker tier then, because the ones in episode one had like some kind of energy in at least one of their arms. Ah, it should be easy for our man. Favorite one? Not too bad. Oh, for a second I thought that was gonna appear as a skull. Oh yeah, true. He is recovering from the beating he received because it did mention that he was gonna recover in a few hours. Because normally he wouldn't be getting tired after just a bit of running. Like, we've seen Whis stand on my feet, but he's not in the best conditions right now. And in a way, I like that. Showing off that damage received from his punishment actually has a bit of ramifications here with his panting and all that. Nice little detail. Yo, the diamond in the trees are looked realistic. It looks like literally something that can exist in our life. It just feels like they took a picture of that and put in the character. That's how well the animation looks. In the trees here too. You can even see like the little details and like the cracks of the trees and all of that. Honestly, I am loving the detailed artwork here. And now they can even have his hair moving in like almost every sequence. Cause that's the animations. Animating the hair must be a pain. Yeah, here they just do it marvelously. Oh. Oh. Hopefully he wasn't flex enough to dodge that. Okay, for a second, I was kind of worried that he was going to get hit by the tree. I'd have been like, whoa. 
Wait, is that the bunny we see in the commercials? Oh, it's kind of cute. <laughs> oh, it's a rabbit. I never thought we'd actually see him in an actual episode. <gasps> oh, it's the same rabbit! Oh, it's hella cute. Aww. Oh, no! Oh! Oh, my... Hopefully Van Zandt shows up, or someone to rescue him. Is he fine, or...? Wait, what's happening? <clears throat> or, wait, so he's subconsciously using the resentful energy then? <clears throat> Oh, it's because of the cut, I'm assuming. Yo, what's going on with his body? Okay, yeah, that is looking really, really ba bad. Bad. <clears throat> Hopefully it's good, but that's not looking good. Oh, okay. Hmm. Oh! I guess he did come to the rescue then. You know what makes this sequence really, really... Oh, that is a beautiful crescent moon. You know what makes this sequence really, really poetic? Because at the beginning of the episode, you gotta remember, we sit, did say that, oh, if you let me go, I'll help you out if you're in danger. But ironically enough, it's the opposite. Because Lan saved... He's behind in this specific episode! That's actually what makes this sequence really, really poetic. The poetic irony here. Where Lan decided to, um... Oh. Oh shit, he is noticing. I mean, he had to do it to survive, though. I mean... But then again, I could see why he would be getting angry at that. Aww. You know that bunny there actually made the sequence actually more impactful too. In a way. No, that was a great way of ending off an episode. No, but it was poetic because he told, I remember he told Lan Lanzian at the start of the episode, if you let me go, oh, I'll, I'll save you. But then Lanzian didn't do that. They were both punished, and then at this near the end, Lanza saves way. That's why it's really poetic irony in this episode, and that's why I felt the bunny made this sequence good. It's because you see the <clears throat> bunny; it looks all innocent and cute, but at the same time, I think it makes the sequence stand out even more because at that moment everything was kind of getting a bit dark, and the bunny. I mean, the rabbit actually added a bit of levity to the situation. Because, for one, Bunny is like a living life and resentful energy isn't 
in the similar category, so it, that's why it makes the sequence stick out more. And additionally, now that we see we actually have the conviction to not want to utilize the resentful energy anymore, it does make you does take you aback and it makes you wonder what's going to be the event that forces them to actually want to utilize the resentful energy. That's what also makes the sequence powerful. And that's how I'm going to rate this episode a... Oh, there's an after credit scene? That's a surprise. That's how I'm going to rate this episode. Shit, I'm going to rate it after I see this after credit sequence then. Aww, the rabbits! Hmm. <laughs> Aww. You could say no to those rabbits. Mm. <laughs> Whoa! I think with that, he's gonna keep the rabbits now. There's no way he's not going to keep the rabbit on. We know Lan Zan's personality. And it, and the reason why we knew he was going to keep them is because of his morality. Because he took the punishment in the previous sequence. And even though the rabbits might cause him some inconvenience, he would rather keep, he would rather keep the rabbits. He would rather keep the rabbits, even though it would probably cause them some inconvenience instead of them being killed. It further establishes his characterization. And yo, I never imagined we were going to get a rabbit sex sequence. What? Oh, that, that was hilarious. And it has impact, too, because you got to remember the, the book they had. And that they were fighting over a few episodes ago when he actually says obscene it actually this joke actually resonates even more so that's hella hella cool as for this specific episode I'm gonna rate it a 10 out of 10 like I felt this was the best episode of the series by far because for one it now feels like the episode you get to know lands in the most I feel like now I love his character much more now just with the sequences of him getting punished, wanting to keep the rabbits, saving way. All that simultaneously. And then him taking the harsher punishment for himself. It's like, yo, there is just no way you cannot love this character. Eh. And that's why I thought this episode resonated with me the most. And we get most layers to weigh in this episode too. Because even though we see his, more of his comedic side... We do see him with now a personal conflict where he wants, now that he utilized a little bit of resentful energy in this episode, he kind of does not want to embark on the path of utilizing it even more. So we also get a bit of character development in this specific episode additionally. And that's why I felt this episode was such a great character focused episode. It may have not had as much action as the first two episodes, but due to like the character development and the characterization, this is this became, at least in my book, the best episode of the series by far. And on top of all these great character moments, I also like the conflict too with now with we we sharing that secret that he utilized resentful energy with his friend with the purple clothing. It just makes you wonder how deep is this shit gonna go? Like, seriously. That kind of startled me for a bit. So, kind of had a bit of horror psychological vibes too. And in addition to that, the animation art was immensely beautiful. Because it got all the basics. You had hair movements for any simple amount of movement. And then, to have like, water dripping out of the sword while it's raining and water droplets actually fall and then drip from their clothing is impressive because I've seen way too many animes or cartoons that don't even pay attention like for example there's this anime I saw 
No, no, it isn't fair because it was 2015. But there were like a lot of there were a few enemies that premiered this season that had rain effects. But at times, it doesn't drip on things. Like when it rains on characters, it doesn't drip, and you don't see droplets or you don't see the water stick. Here, the water actually sticks. That is extremely impressive from a visual standpoint. On top of all the realistic detailed backgrounds and all that. And you can even see the clothes noticeably wet when they're bathing and all that. Which is impressive. It's not even something I see often in Japanese or American animations. You do see them in those animations on occasions though. Damn, this show, this, this series is doing it in doses. And that's why, oh, and the voice performances, my goodness. Wei's, Wei's actor was to see him not just portray comedic centered sequences, but drama was just astounding to see his vocal range. And that's why I felt this episode was worthy of a 10 out of 10. So, anyways, y'all, comment down your thoughts on. Mo Dao Zushi episode 5 or your thoughts on my reaction. Be sure to rate the video, subscribe, share it, and I'll give and I'll see you guys later if you come back for more, because I'm definitely gonna be live reacting to episode 6. Alright, thank y'all so much for watching everyone. Have a great and safe day. Bye bye.